shown here are the basic components needed for the 900 megahertz audio video link. We have the 900 megahertz audio video receiver, the 900 megahertz T2 transmitter with range up to two miles. We have our flight pack, which consists of a micro fuse and a switch, a Y harness for connection of power between the transmitter and the camera. This is the color camera. This is the PC44 and the PC18XSA black and white camera. Both cameras have audio. Now we'll give you a little more information about the individual products, starting with the 900 megahertz receiver. This unit has given us hours of drift-free signal reception because of its phase lock loop receiver. The unit is quite simple to use. We show here that we have simple RCA audio and video output. They're even color-coded for the use of the consumer, white being the audio and yellow being the video. Here we have our DC 15 volts input and our type F connector, right angle rubber whip antenna included. Shown here configured in a suitable enclosure is the black and white PC 18 XSA with a high quality multi-element medium wide angle micro lenses with audio. The PC 18's resolution is a stunning 380 lines with a solid state CCD imager and automatic stepless electronic shutter. Here's the PC44 camera. This color camera has an advanced DSP chipset and features auto gain control, auto white balance, auto backlight control, and an electronic shutter. Its 78 degree field of view lens with 330 lines of resolution produces a stunning RC aerial video. Next is our transmitter of choice, the high power 900T2. This awesome transmitter not only features compact lightweight construction, but will give us a range of nearly two miles with the standard rubber whip antenna. This transmitter features plug and play, audio and video connections, and power supply hookup. One thing I wanted to mention, it's not necessary to have a custom built aircraft to use a video link. Here we have constructed a simple enclosure that will house our video link package. It's made out of some 1 16th light ply, so the enclosure is relatively light in construction. On the bottom, it is in the shape of an airfoil, so it can sit on top of the wing saddle and be secured evenly. On the interior, we use some simple bracing of some 3 8 square hardwood stock. And we use balsa wood for the floor, some 1 32nd sheeting, I believe, and the addition of some dowels. The dowels we will use in order to secure the aircraft, or rather to secure the video link, onto the top of the aircraft by using the existing rubber band mounts on the trainer aircraft we're going to use. Let's get started by installing our battery, fuse, and switch assembly. This is slightly different than what we showed you a few moments ago. This here is actually a NICAD rechargeable battery pack. This takes nine cells producing 1.25 volts to attain our 12 volts nominal voltage. We made up a simple wiring harness using black for the negative, red for the positive, with a little bit of heat shrink applied. Now we have our inline fuse holder with a one amp fast acting fuse and a micro switch and a male jack. This is a very valuable piece of information I'm about to give you and that is checking the polarity on your battery packs and your systems. In most cases on the systems that we have purchased on the polarity the jack, the center portion is positive and the outer portion is negative and I would highly recommend that you check all your power supplies to make sure they've been wired correctly. Um, if you make up your own, it's very simple to check. All we need to do is turn our master switch on. We'll place the positive lead inside of the jack and the negative on the outside of the jack. And as we can see here, we have nearly 12 volts. If we switch the leads around, you would find 
you would get a negative reading on your voltage. Reverse polarity can be very damaging to the micro video products. So please take the time to check your polarity. Now we can place the battery into the bottom of the enclosure. And we'll remove the retaining nut and washer. As you can see, we had previously pre-drilled this hole. The switch location is not critical. This just seemed to be the best location for our need. This is to give you a better look at what we've done so far. We've installed the switch. The battery is sitting in the bottom of the enclosure. And there, once again, is our fuse and our mail jack for power. Now, we will install the transmitter. Previously, I had installed what I call as a sticky back. What it's used for is when you want to use a tie wrap or a retainer. There's an adhesive back on this that can be removed. And now we can stick this in place on the location intended. A lot of times I'll rough the surface area with some sandpaper and I might use a little bit of thin CA glue on this so I get 100% adhesion. Here's the transmitter that we will install next. Previously, I drilled a hole in the cover for the antenna to slide up through, like so. Now, we will place the transmitter inside. Now, we'll simply fold up some foam and slide that in place by the transmitter. This will help reduce some of the shock and help hold our transmitter in location that we need it to be. Now we'll check the lid for fit to see if we're even somewhat close. It looks like our transmitter needs to slide back just a little bit. And we can move this around in here somewhat. Now we're ready for our Y connector. What our Y connector does for us is allows us to come with power off of the battery into the Y harness, splitting power for two different locations. One which will feed the transmitter and the other which will feed the camera. Also, you can notice again, we've used some colored tape for lack of confusion when assembly of the camera and the transmitter. Now our connections are all made. Next step will be to use some of the soft foam. We will wrap the camera and install it into the enclosure. Let's start by placing the foam into the bottom of the enclosure. This will wrap the camera securely. Now we will place our PC-18 on top of the foam. It is to look out the front of the enclosure and we'll wrap the foam up around the top. Now at this point we're just going to simply fold the cabling up, the excess cabling, and we'll fold it into the top of the enclosure. Now at this point, before we fasten the lid down, we'll fire up our video link here in the shop and we'll check to make sure our camera is facing upright or maybe when we installed it ended up on its side.